Yeah, y'all. So, um, I don't know. I'm sure y'all have some questions, but I just, I have one question. I just wanted to know, like, how would y'all feel if we told you that we wanted to offer you a contract to play? Cause we about to offer y'all a contract to play. Man, oh my! I want to hear, baby. Let's go. Let's go. My girl Rebecca is emotional, baby. <laughs> yes, yes, I mean, yes. you you have no idea. Having a daughter, that there's something very powerful having a daughter and wanting to be the best mom to her that I could be and, you know, being an example. And that was basically kind of my foundation for him. Like, you know what, if she has any dreams at any age, I want her to go for them. So, today is Saturday, um, the 15th of January, right? Yes, the 15th of January. Um, today should be the day before that um, we would be heading to Vegas. Um, unfortunately, our family has um, been dealing with some COVID. We've been trying to find the positives in all of it. Um, I mean, I'm thankful that I had the positive test, so I'm not bringing anything. We're not bringing anything into um, market when we get there. Um, and I mean, I guess it's good that all of us are healthy past the 10 days to where we're able to see each other and um, say bye. Now warm up in. She's like kicking her legs down, her feet down on my legs. <laughs> One more minute. So, I'm sitting in the middle of all of our luggage for Vegas uh, for all three of us for five, six weeks. Hopefully, we have everything we need. What about you? What did you pack that's most important? Say this. Mama. Mama, yeah. <laughs> You know, she called me and I could tell something was wrong. She... I woke up and didn't feel her moving. Yeah. Usually, like right away, she would move. And I called up and I was like, something's not right. I was like crying. And they did an ultrasound, I think. Did the Doppler, couldn't get anything, so... There was two weeks from like when we found out that her heart had stopped to when I was induced and had her. And from the very beginning, I told Dan, I said, look, like, I don't wanna go get in bed and cry by myself. I was like, that's like where I could get depressed. That's where like some like weird things could happen. I get mad at you that like you're living your life and I'm in bed crying. Like, and I said, I'm not gonna, I said, if I need to cry in bed, I need you in there with me. I kind of was able to see you know, the pressure that is put on women to, you know, like, to have the perfect pregnancy. And, you know, Becca feels like it was something that she did wrong somehow because she was carrying her, but she didn't do anything wrong. And you get people saying, oh, well, are you doing this? Are you eating that? And maybe you need to do this. And, and it, I, you know, I had a hard time hearing some of that stuff because I, I knew how well I already knew how she was thinking that it was her fault and none of it was I mean I don't know how many times I told you it's not your fault but I feel like I said that over and over um, and I you know she understands that right you understand that um, but I think you know, that's, that's another thing that we want, like, other people who might go through, you know, other women who go through it, like, they need to know that it's not their fault. And I think that's why we want to tell our story. Joe, what do you think? Mama gets to play 
three minutes. Natasha Cloud and Courtney Williams tomorrow. You met both of them today. I couldn't walk a year ago, Dodo. How is this real? How is this real? This is crazy. I think we've just learned that like you can't bury grief. I mean, we've been through a lot of it and um, you know, you, you have to just deal with it. And for us, like we've just dealt with it together. And I think it also has helped us appreciate the good stuff too. You know, we have a sleeping Jojo in there and like the way that we parent her is, I think out of like a deeper love than we would have had without Nora. Please welcome a spoken word artist, Asha Kulhane Hussein. To love another human being is an act of courage. To love a game is an act that requires courage from every fiber in your being. Because the game of basketball calls those with character. And those with character respond. Some tasted this passion at seven years old. For some, this love started with a college scholarship. And a love like this began to test. A love like this put an exam paper on the table and said, work ethic, how much you got? Even though my legs tingle in fatigue, even though my arms burn in anticipation of the next shot, I will whisper to myself, one more, I will not stop, with hands made to shoot a three, that I come back the next morning stronger in my mentality because I don't need to tell you that I have birthed life into this world, that I have experienced a stillbirth, that I have continued with my training, that I have raised my daughter because that you'll see in my eyes. I don't need to tell you how much I love this game because that's the reason I'm standing here.